Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Confirmed cases of the coronavirus continue to rise here in San Antonio, and our military bases are no exception. Alicia Brera joining us live with the latest numbers at JBSA Lackland. And we have the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and what the government is doing now to help with the crisis. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, this is a shot just across the street, and it really does show you just how gross it is out there. 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We are going to start checking in with Sarah Spivey just a few moments. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, March 22nd, and I've seen people... Morning all over social media being like, we don't even know what day it is. We've lost track of the days. True for a lot of people that are working from home and, mm -hmm. and some people that unfortunately are, are not working right now, it can be hard to get keep track of the days. I will say though, today is a perfect day to stay inside, get that binge watching out of the way, <laughs> a little lazy Sunday vibe. Yeah, definitely. Hey, everybody. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, it is a good day to stay inside, at least for the morning hours, but we will be able to see some sun in the afternoon, which is pretty nice. Right now outside, you can see that we are dealing with areas of fog right now. Visibility at the airport is down to a quarter of a mile, visibility down to a mile and a half up in New Braunfels. So it's a mixture of fog and drizzle, as well as even some areas of mist out there so it is a little bit of a gray morning temperatures are in the 50s it's 56 at the airport 52 at bernie stage airfield 54 in rio medina 51 in comfort it was a chilly day all day yesterday we stayed in the 50s all day and today however I do think that we will be able to see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. It's mainly going to be a gray day, but even just a little bit of sun in the afternoon is going to allow our temperatures to warm up to near 70 degrees uh, with south southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Believe it or not, today is actually going to be the coolest day in the next seven days. In fact, it'll be very warm by the middle of the week. We'll be topping off in the 90s. I've got to look ahead to that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. The number of COVID-19 cases continuing to rise here in San Antonio. We now know four more cases have been confirmed. And these latest numbers involve military members at Joint Base San Antonio. Our Lisa Barrera is live downtown with the latest. Good morning. Well, yes, four more cases have been confirmed at Joint Base San Antonio, bringing the number, that total number, to 11 cases. And with the latest numbers that were confirmed just yesterday evening, we know that three of those military members are in isolation in their homes. One of them is in isolation at Bamsey Hospital. And all this information has been confirmed by military officials. Here's what we know so far about the latest four that tested positive for COVID-19. They include a U.S. Army soldier assigned to JBSA Fort Sam Houston, a U.S. Air Force airman assigned to JBSA Randolph, who returned from overseas travel and immediately self-isolated prior to symptoms. The last two are retire retirees. The positive test results were confirmed by Bamsey Hospital, and because of this increase, the JBSA commander has increased the health protection condition to Charlie, which means substantial precautions that include the potential of severely restricted access to military installation. And the next step on these four cases is to track any contact that was made with those four military members. Um, that is being done by public health officials. And just ahead on six at 630 on GMSA, are these cases related to the cases in Lackland, those that were quarantined from the cruise ship. I'll have that information for you just ahead. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And as she said, the military base numbers are at 11, and they are not the only numbers on the rise. As of this morning, 39 confirmed cases here in San Antonio. So here's a breakdown of those 39 and what we know about them right now. 16 travel-related cases, 9 are community spread, 13 of the confirmed cases fall in the age group of 40 to 49 years old. The age group with the second highest amount of cases are 20 to 29 year olds. And so far, Metro Health Labs have tested almost 300 people. Private labs, including LabCorp and Quest, also performing the same tests. And today, Governor Greg Abbott will give an update on the state's efforts to combat COVID-19. The governor will be joined by the commissioner of the Texas Department of State Health Services and the chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management. The conference is expected to happen at 3 p.m. 
at the state capitol and it will be live streamed. And if you haven't been on the roads lately, that's probably for the best. But if you do need to go somewhere like the grocery store, some good news, low gas prices. Right now, the national average price for gas is $2.15. Here in Texas, though, obviously it's lower. The average $1.87 and even better here in Bear County. The average is even lower, $1.78 on average. And according to AAA, prices at the pump could drop another 40 to 70 cents per gallon in just the next month or two. But if you do fill up, remember, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, or use a glove at the pump. New data shows that the coronavirus can survive on plastic or steel for up to three days. And there are a lot of questions right now. A big one, though, how is the federal government going to intervene in everything? So the House and Senate leaders are getting ready, ready to meet later today after negotiations continued all the way overnight on Capitol Hill. And the idea right now is a massive rescue bill that is expected to top $1 trillion. And that as the number of cases reaches a grim new milestone, topping 300,000 globally. Karina Mitchell has the latest from New York where a stay at home order takes effect at 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight. New York has become the country's epicenter, the number of reported cases surging past 12,000. The president warning other states could follow suit as medical experts warn of a critical shortage of medical supplies. New Jersey becoming the sixth state to close all non-essential businesses, joining California, New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. An overnight word that inmates at dozens of New York City jails testing positive for coronavirus, as well as a superintendent of schools in New Rochelle, a hot spot in the New York outbreak. Democrats and Republicans vowing they're close to delivering a bill for a vote later today that will blunt the blow to American workers and businesses decimated by the pandemic. Here in New York, the city's health department saying it is limiting COVID-19 tests to hospitalized patients only to preserve tests and vital supplies. That is Vice President Pence and his wife test negative for the virus. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And in Spain, the first COVID-19 patients arrived at a new Spanish field hospital set up at Madrid's convention center and fairgrounds. Officials say the first phase includes more than 1,000 conventional beds and 96 ICU beds. Should the situation get worse, authorities say they could expand to up to 5,000 beds. Now, Spain saw a spike in 5,000 new cases of COVID-19 just Friday itself. Spain in total has almost 25,000 cases and more than 1,000 deaths. And time now, 607, 56 degrees now. Making music with a mission. What one seasoned musician is doing to inspire the next generation of artists that's still ahead. And I'm sure you've seen the empty shelves or the TP hoarding, but do you know how much toilet paper you actually need? Well, don't worry, we are here to figure that out for you. There is a website that can tell you just that. Well, the details, that's next. Interesting. Yeah. You know what? At this time, <laughs> there's a website for everything. Also, shout out to our David Elder. He designed a website yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, that actually tells you what the best curbside restaurants in San Antonio are. We'll take a look. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 611. A new website has been designed to help with toilet paper the toilet paper crisis. Well, the site reports its average user has 500% more toilet paper than they need during quarantine. The website is simple to use. First, users have to go to howmuchtoiletpaper.com. Then users enter how many rolls of toilet paper they have and how many times they generally visit the bathroom. Then the calculator says how much toilet paper you need to survive the pandemic. The designers of the page hope it will reduce the toilet paper shortage around the world. Huh. I, I agree. It won't. It won't. No. I agree, Sarah. People are going to freak out anyway. I, I agree. All right, we're just going to throw it right to Sarah. Sarah, <laughs> yes. give us your hot take. That's yes. my hot take. I've had a lot of hot takes recently. It's appreciated. What really this grinds is... your gears? <laughs> People hoarding toilet paper. I agree. First of all, I don't understand the mentality behind it because... You can't eat toilet paper, and if you were right. locked in your house, you would think you would want something to eat. Um, and then also, we're on our last roll of toilet paper, mm. and we are dreading having to go 
Well, you should get, go to the website and figure out how much you need. Well, we already know how much. Yeah, we need. they need one. one. Yeah. <laughs> six pack of toilet paper will be fine, and then you go a week later. That's kind of how I feel. Okay, we're gonna go to weather, and I gotta stop complaining about the toilet paper issue. Right now, outside, I get to complain about the weather. It is cloudy with areas of drizzle and fog out there right now. It's 56 degrees at the airport. Visibility is really low out there right now. Uh, we're looking at visibility less than a quarter of a mile in many places around Bear County and especially uh, up to the north uh, near Bernie Stage Road and up uh, along I-10 out toward the hill country as well. Visibility down to half a mile uh, in some places, down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, uh, down to a mile and a half out near New Braunfels and down to a mile in Kerrville. It is chilly too out there with temperatures in the 50s. Yesterday we been all day in the 50s. We're in the 50s right now. 56 at the airport, 55 Volverde, 52 Bernie Stage, uh, 51 in Comfort, and 53 in Tarpley. But today, I do think we are going to be able to see a little sunshine in the afternoon. Just a few peaks of sunshine. Most of the day will be cloudy. But those few peaks of sunshine should allow us to warm up in the afternoon. I'll show you those temperatures in just a second, but it's cool just about everywhere, including out near Del Rio, where it's 55 degrees, 64 Victoria, 61 in Beeville, a little bit of a warm spot down there closer to the coastal plain. Now, we're not expecting as much rain as what we saw yesterday. Again, we could just see areas of drizzle this morning, but there are a few showers uh, just south of La Prior and Batesville, just north of Crystal City, right along Highway uh, 30, uh, 80 rather there and south of 57. Uh, these could pass on east toward Pearsall, but again, that's the kind of real rain showers we may be dealing with today. Just those isolated, very light rain showers. Meanwhile, drizzle ongoing around San Antonio. Take a look at the future cast. This is in the afternoon. You can see a few peaks of sunshine will be possible, but it is going to be mainly a gray day. And then after sunset, we will see uh, some of those clouds return. Again, you can see that we should see a few peaks of sunshine today around San Antonio in the afternoon. A couple of isolated showers possible, especially southeast of I-35. And then by this evening, we'll be back to the cloud cover uh, with areas of fog by midnight. So just to summarize everything for you, patchy fog and mist out there right now will stay in the 50s for most of the morning. We'll be in the low 60s around noon. It'll still be cloudy. And even in the afternoon, when we could see a few peaks of sunshine, the sky will be be mainly gray. 70 degrees southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and fog will redevelop late this evening. Now yesterday was was rainy and cold and it was hard to get outside at all. I think today you'll be able to get outside Again, it's just going to be a little on the cool and gray side, but then we are really going to warm up during the week ahead. We'll have ample sunshine. If you are one of those people who wants to go out and socially distance outside at one of our local parks or trails, this week is going to be nice for that. It is going to be on the warmer side again, near 90 degrees pretty much all week long. Uh, we'll really warm up thanks to a ridge of high pressure in place, but again, we could see our first 90 degree day of the season this week, and I think we'll get there. Max, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Sarah. Look Windy like and sunny on Wednesday. Yeah. It's like summer already. <laughs> sort of. 615, uh, about 56 degrees out. And it's something we can't live without still ahead on GMSA. We're going to break down World Water Day. And singers, songwriters, musicians, so many more thousands of women joining forces to make music with a mission. Details are next. Good morning and happy Sunday, 16 and 19 this morning. So the question is, what does it really take to become famous? Well, the latest statistics show there are about a million singers and songwriters in the United States trying to come up with the next big hit. Here's the sad news, though. 91% of them will never be known. They'll never sing in a stadium packed with screaming fans. They'll never make the big bucks. In fact, on average, the most of them earn will be a few thousand dollars to about $35,000 a year doing what they love. Now one seasoned musician is bringing together voices, knowledge, and experience to empower the next generation of artists. Do you even know? In a group and solo, Beth McKee has traveled the world. Now she's using what she's learned to bring female musicians together. Most of my life I was the only female in the band. 
Swamp Sisters is now 2,700 members strong. I play guitar. I play guitar and sing. Amy Robbins came to the Sisters wanting to know one thing. There is so much talent, it's hard to stick out. Most musicians, they thought, well, you know, I'm just going to play. No, nope. we're the leader of the band and the boss and the person that writes the checks and books the gigs and, and conducts the business, too. And just how do you get hired? And I say, get good. And then you have to get contacts and then you have to get busy. But beyond the concerts, jam sessions and workshops, the Swamp Sisters combine their art with activism to give back to the community. The Swamp Sisters Lala Music Festival raised $70,000 for local food banks last year. We've really done a jam up job, in my humble opinion, of supporting each other in such beautiful ways. Proving that with the right motivation, a mentor, and a lot of talent, you can sing your way to success. And Beth says that if you're a musician and you want to be part of the Swamp Sisters, you just have to go to the Facebook page and easily get in touch. And you can find out more and see where members will be playing across the country on the Swamp Sisters Facebook page. Time now, 621, 56 degrees out. And next on GMSA, it's a perfect day to be thankful for all the things that the Earth has given us. And we're talking about water because today is World Water Day. Good morning and welcome back. 624 this Sunday morning. Clean, running water, something we count on, but it might be something we actually take for granted. So today is World Water Day and a chance to focus on one of the most important resources in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, billions of people across the globe don't have access to safe, clean drinking water. And while getting that resource to those in need is a challenge, everyone can do their part to conserve their water. Don't leave water running while you brush your teeth. Take shorter showers, all as a way to cut down on your usage. Important reminder. There you go. I got nothing. <laughs> so I try to be efficient, but I'd... no, I, I try to too. I yeah. think I think our parents taught us, and now we're trying to. Mm. Well, I'm trying to teach my little one as well. Ready for this? What? Brush your teeth in the shower. Boom. <laughs> what? Sarah had the same all response. All right, time now. 625, 50, 56 degrees out. It's efficient. Uh, okay. And a new COVID-19 test that gives results in only 45 minutes. That's ahead on GMSA. And Rihanna donating millions of dollars to help with the cause. And we have all the details. That's next. The details of the press conference held at the White House yesterday. What President Donald Trump said about the medical supplies and what actions they're taking. Next on GMSA. But first, we are taking a look at birthdays. Oh, that's such a cute one. Aww. We have Elijah, three years old. Happy birthday, Elijah. And a happy birthday to Brett, 22 years old. Now keep sending your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, March 22nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. It is 56 degrees and mm -hmm. actually, um, you know, might may seem a little chilly. It's better than yesterday morning. We're already five degrees warmer than yesterday, but Sarah, you're saying that we could see a warm up throughout the day. Max, I am impressed with your memory of temperatures. Yes, this time yesterday, we really were Really stepping it up with this whole quarantining thing. <laughs> we are, 51 degrees yesterday, but right now we're at 56. Unfortunately though, it's not not that pretty outside. I want to show you the live cam. Can't really see much there, all because of areas of mist and fog. Here's a look at visibility in miles out there. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, down to a mile and a quarter in New Braunfels and in Kerrville, down to a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield as well. Uh, in, just generally everywhere you look, we are dealing with the areas of mist and drizzle out there this morning. Nothing significant on the radar to talk about, but this drizzle should be with us throughout the mid morning hours. Uh, we could see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, which would be nice, but generally it's going to be on the cool side today. Not as chilly as yesterday, but it's 56 degrees in San Antonio, 55 in Hondo, 55 in Del Rio, and 58 in Gonzales. The whole state of Texas, a little bit on the cooler side, but warmer than yesterday. Yesterday, Amarillo was at freezing there in the 40s. Now, Dallas was in the 40s. They're in the 50s now as well. So a lot of us are confined to our homes, except for 
when we want to go take a walk outside. Maybe you want to take your dog for a walk today. Just know that for Fido's forecast, it'll be a yellow paw this morning because of the areas of mist and drizzle out there as well as fog. But it should be cloudy and pleasant in the afternoon. A few peaks of sunshine by about five when we'll top off near 70 degrees. And then tonight you got the green paw too. It'll just be cloudy again by about nine or 10 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's a look at your Fido's forecast. What about us people? I've got a look ahead, including rain chances and a big warm up. Not going to rain much this week, which is good news. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Per JBSA Lackland, we now know there are at least four more confirmed cases of COVID-19 here in San Antonio. And the latest numbers involve military members throughout several military installations. Our Alicia Berrera is live downtown with more on these cases. Good morning. Well, I just want to clarify that these cases are not related to the cruise ship evacuees being quarantined at Lackland. Actually, none of these cases, uh, the new cases, the four new cases that we're reporting on are from Lackland. They just involve Fort Sam Houston and Randolph Air Base. Now, all this information was confirmed by military officials just yesterday evening. All positive test results were confirmed by Bamsey Hospital. Three of those military members are in isolation in their homes, and one is currently in isolation at Bamsey Hospital. That's according to military officials. The latest four that tested positive for COVID-19 include a U.S. Army soldier assigned to Fort Sam Houston, a U.S. Air, Air Force airman assigned to Randolph, who returned from overseas travel and immediately self-isolated prior to symptoms. The last two are retirees. These cases bring the total number of confirmed cases at Joint Base San Antonio as of this morning up to 11. Now, the next step in all these cases is to track uh, make a track of anyone who has had a contact with these four military members in the last few days. That's being done by public health officials. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center now holding a week-long community blood drive, and that is set for tomorrow morning. The drive is in hopes of building up a 20-day supply amid the outbreak. Now, the drive will be at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium, and it starts from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Donations our appointment only, and we have all that information right now on KSAT.com, so you can sign up. And across the rest of Texas, the State Department of Health and Human Services is reporting 304 positive cases and five deaths. As of now, more than 2,000 people have been tested. On KSAT.com, you can find an interactive map highlighting each county affected and how many cases are being reported. There are so many issues going on with this pandemic, but right now we do know that a lot of hospitals are struggling because they have a limited supplies of masks and the proper equipment. And President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence in a press conference made a major announcement yesterday saying they ordered hundreds of millions of masks. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. As America's health care workers face rapidly dwindling supplies, President Trump says American businesses are stepping up. It's been really pretty amazing what's happened with the private sector. They are really in uh, sixth gear. The administration praising companies like Hanes, which is retrofitting its factories to make masks, and Apple donating two million of its own masks. The vice president announcing the federal government is going far further to meet demand, ordering approximately 600 million N95 masks over the next 18 months. How is that going to be distributed and what can doctors and nurses expect to actually receive those masks? Yeah, HHS is completing a, um, a half a billion dollar order of N95 masks and, and um, uh, we, all of this is being coordinated through FEMA. Uh, and uh, and we're, we are responding specifically to state requests where the needs arrive. When exactly can they expect to receive these masks though? We'll prioritize. Uh, those scarce resources because every single governor across the country is looking for the exact same thing. So. The president continuing to push for FDA approval for a pair of drugs to treat the virus, the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine and antibiotic azithromycin. We don't have much time. You know, we have a lot of very sick people right now in hospitals all over the place. Dr. Anthony Fauci quick to clarify. Uh, I'm not totally sure what the, the president was referring to. Many of the things that you hear out there are, are what I had called anecdotal reports. They may be true, but they're anecdotal. And that was ABC's Trevor Alt reporting. 
As to what the federal government will do to help stabilize the economy, the top four members of Congress set to meet with the White House negotiator later this morning. They're trying to finalize a coronavirus related stimulus package. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin is meeting with the top two members of his party as well as Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Now, senators hoping to take a procedural vote on the package, but it is unclear if the House plans to support it with the upper chamber. Now, a top White House economic advisor says this economic stimulus package could be worth up to $2 trillion. Now, on the testing front, the first rabbit Rapid diagnostic test for COVID-19 has been approved by the FDA. The new test can detect COVID-19 in about 45 minutes. The California-based company, which makes the test, says they can start shipping next week. Now, experts say the faster testing will help alleviate some of the pressure out of hospitals and their medical resources. And Hawaii's governor now instituting a mandatory 14-day self-quarantine for all people traveling to the state. Now, the decision comes as part of efforts to fight the spread of the coronavirus. Now, the order applies to returning residents and visitors that arrive at Hawaii airports from the continental United States and from international destinations. The governor says returning residents must quarantine themselves at home and visitors must quarantine themselves in their hotel room. The governor also says people under quarantine will be allowed to leave only for medical emergencies or to seek medical care. And China has sent 18 tons of medical supplies, including hundreds of thousands of surgical and protection masks to Greece. An Air China flight landed in Athens yesterday morning, bringing in those supplies. They included eight tons of equipment donated by the Chinese government, among them 550,000 masks and 10 tons of materials donated by Chinese businesses and organizations. And Amazon employees filling orders for people at home in isolation are going to be getting a temporary pay raise. Workers at the warehouse who put in overtime will get twice their hourly pay. That's instead of the company's usual time and a half policy. The change is scheduled to run until May 9th, at least May 9th. And Amazon also raising wages by $2 an hour starting in April. And Starbucks employees will still see a paycheck even if they don't work during the coronavirus outbreak. Now, the coffee chain right now only has drive through options and they're still doing delivery orders. Starbucks leaders say they will pay employees for the next 30 days and it's up to employees if they work or not. And Netflix creating a $100 million relief fund for TV and film workers. Those workers who may be unemployed due to this pandemic. Almost all movie and television productions have stopped around the globe, having more than 100,000 crew members out of work. Netflix says most of the money will go towards helping them make ends meet. Some of it will go toward other nonprofit organizations with similar goals. And just a reminder, we will continue to follow all of the latest COVID-19 developments to learn the latest developments on local, national, and international news and how it impacts you. You can go to kset.com and look for the coronavirus section. And time now, 639, 56 degrees out. And Spain under stay-at-home orders, but people there are allowed to go out to the grocery store and the pharmacies and to walk their dogs. But what about dinosaurs? <laughs> you read that right. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm looking at the video right now. Okay, well, we're going to take a... Another look at it just, just in a minute. And the pandemic has many business owners closing down their doors. So during this time, some people are doing their best to give back to those in need. Next on GMSA, a viral story that has a lot of people talking. And taking a look outside with live cam, can't see much. Great shot right there. <laughs> 50, Beautiful. 56 degrees. Really encapsulating all that the Alamo City has to offer. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's going to get better. That's what Sarah says. We're going to check in with her in just a bit. Well, good morning and welcome back. If you did a quick Google search yesterday, you may have noticed an animated clip of a man displaying how to properly wash your hands. So yesterday's Google Doodle is much more than that. It pays homage to Dr. Agnes Simmelweis, credited with discovering the medical importance of washing your hands. And obviously this is more timely than almost anything we've seen on the Google Doodles. So worked at the Vienna General Hospitals in the 1840s when he noticed new mothers we're actually getting really sick and dying because of a disease called, a disease called child bed fever. Now, there were many theories as to why this was happening, but the Hungarian doctor came up with an idea. He asked the doctors to wash their hands in between operations, and it worked. The mortality rate of the mothers fell considerably. And we were uh, wondering what was behind that. Right, and you know what? It makes so much sense, especially now amid this pandemic. It is so important. Wash your hands, yes. 20 seconds. 
Happy birthday twice. Yes, actually before all this started, I was, uh, I was listening. I was in the kitchen and I could hear my daughter say, well, I didn't know what she was doing. She was singing happy birthday. I was like, who's she talking to? Let's and go. that's what she was doing. Yeah. Teaching her young. Smart. Yeah, that was credit to my husband. All right, and speaking of the pandemic, amid the coronavirus, many people at restaurants, they're struggling and some places are even closing down. Yeah, but a group of Chili's regulars in Memphis donated money to a bartender following the restaurant's closing. Take a look. Hey, look, y'all. Hey, we take care of our people. We at the bar right now. We take care of our people. We at the bar right now. Trish, come on now. We take care of our people now. What you got, baby? What you got? What you got? You ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to worry about nothing, baby. Wow, that bartender after went around the restaurant giving <laughs> everyone a hug in gratitude. And since it's released, the video has gone viral on social media. And you know what? We, we talk about this. Obviously, we cover a lot of bad, but it really is amazing to see the community come together and help out those in need. And step up. Yeah, that's really cool. Are you crying? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would be. That's pretty impressive. And again, we've had a few great meals uh, at our household just from ordering to-go food. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a lot of restaurants are doing that if you can. They're pretty good deals, too, and remember to tip well because those yes. guys are kind of struggling at the moment. Yes. Uh, but we have seen quite a bit of rainfall uh, around south central Texas just since Thursday. This is a look at observed rainfall since Thursday. At the airport, a little bit more than nine-tenths of an inch of rain, a little bit less than one inch of rainfall just since Thursday. So, again, good steady rain. What I'm really encouraged by is that south of Highway 90, we are in drought conditions, but... Look at the Pleasanton, almost three inches of rainfall since Thursday out in Pleasanton, a little bit more than two inches of rain in Pearsall, almost three inches of rain down in Catula. This is no doubt going to have a dent in the extreme drought for those counties. Unfortunately, not a ton of rainfall uh, for some counties out closer to Del Rio, where there is still a drought conditions out there as well, but still Nice rainfall, even two inches of rain out near Seguin since Thursday, about an inch of rain near Canyon Lake and half an inch of rain near Kerrville. Right now outside, we are getting some kind of precipitation. It's just mist and it's not really mounting too much in the rain gauge. It's 56 degrees outside. You can see the low clouds and the mist out there right now. Visibility is very low. Winds are calm and those temperatures are close to the dew point. And that's why we're seeing some areas of fog as well as mist. It's chilly this morning too with temperatures in the 50s. It's 51 in Kerrville, 50 in Rock Springs, 55 in Del Rio, 54 Carrizo Springs, 56 in Catula, and 58 in Gonzales. But again, although we're not seeing much on the radar, we are seeing uh, quite a bit of mist and drizzle out there. Visibility down to about a quarter of a mile at the airport in San Antonio, uh, down to two and a half miles out near Uvalde, three quarters of a mile up in Rock Springs, a mile in Kerrville, and a mile and a half in New Braunfels. Most of us will be staying home this morning, but if you do have some places to go, just know to use those low beams rather than those high beams in the mist and in the fog uh, on the radar. Like I said, not much around San Antonio other than mist, but there is one itty bitty thunderstorm working its way toward Pearsall, just to the west of Pearsall right now, south of uh, 57 and west of 35. This is going to dissipate very shortly here, but if you do live in Pearsall, you could hear a quick rumble of thunder and some very light passing rain just momentarily. In the high risk future cast, I do want to show you that most of the day today will be cloudy. However, in the afternoon, we could see a few peaks of sunshine. And although we stayed in the 50s yesterday, I think today with a few peaks of sunshine, we should be able to warm up to near 70 degrees. As you can see, that is entirely possible uh, on our high res future cast. Most of us topping off right near 70 degrees later on this afternoon. Morning fog and drizzle out there right now will stay in the 50s for the morning hours, but into the afternoon, warming up with those few peaks of sunshine. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and tonight we'll see the clouds return. However, in the week ahead, we are going to see a lot of sunshine and we're going to see significant warm up. That system that brought us the rain is moving off to the east and in its stead, we're going to see a ridge of high pressure settle over south central Texas and that's going to allow for a sunny and a warming trend. In fact, by Wednesday, we should be able to see our first 90 degree day of the season and that's going to continue through the end of the week itself we will be warm. Temperatures are going to climb really uh, nicely again near 90 Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. 
And on top of that, if you are getting a little stir crazy in the house and want to check out the trails, local trails and parks should be nice during the week, uh, a little bit on the humid side and of course a little bit on the warm side as well. But welcome change to the rainy weather pattern we've had over the last few days. Max, Stephanie. Thanks. Mindy, it's sunny. Oh, weather's going to get there. I know. I, I never thought I would be looking forward to 90, but I am for some reason. So close yet Want so the far. Sun. <laughs> 649, 56 degrees out. Coming up next on GMSA, a big donation from Rihanna. How she is expecting to help those in need during this coronavirus crisis. Good morning and welcome back. 652 this Sunday morning and here's a new one. Police in Spain making an unusual stop and one that just had to go viral. So the whole country is under a national stay at home order, but take a look. This person in a T-Rex costume thought it might not apply to him. Now police wouldn't say whether he was wearing the costume instead of a hazmat suit. So in Spain, people are allowed outside to walk their dogs, but police pointed out that this does not apply to dinosaurs. <laughs> The police in the area clearly have a sense of humor. The video was actually posted on their social media pages. And Rihanna's foundation is donating $5 million to coronavirus relief efforts. Now the singer working with other organizations in the United States, the Caribbean, and Africa to make use of the funds. The money will help provide protective gear for healthcare workers. It will also supplement food banks for the elderly and it will help fund coronavirus tests and respiratory supplies. Rihanna actually calling on people to work together, improve the world, help people out. And she actually doubled an NAACP award this year. Wow. It's good to see everybody helping yeah. out. You know what? Again, community coming together for a good cause. $5 million is a lot. Yeah. Yes. Hope it helps. 654, 56 degrees out. Let's take a look at some birthdays this weekend. We have Nicholas turning 13 years old. Happy birthday. And happy birthday to Adela. Oh, she's one. What an adorable picture. Happy first birthday. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures to ksat.com. We're going to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, thousands of new cases of coronavirus diagnosed in New York State. More than half under 50 years old as the state's stay at home order is about to take effect tonight. Plus the physicians on the front lines. We're going to hear from doctors and nurses at hospitals in New York City, which has been described as the epicenter of this epidemic in the U.S. The conditions they're working under and their urgent plea for critical supplies. And finally, this is very important. The frantic search happening right now for a cure. The scientists who are using a unique strategy to try to find a vaccine. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. The number of COVID-19 cases in San Antonio continues to increase. In a news release shared by Joint Base San Antonio last night, they confirmed four more cases, bringing the total number up to 11. The latest four that tested positive for COVID-19 include a U.S. Army soldier assigned to JBSA Fort Sam Houston, a U.S. Air Force Airman assigned to Randolph Base who returned from overseas travel and immediately self-isolated prior to symptoms. The last two are retirees. Three Three of those military members are in isolation in their homes and one is currently in isolation at BMC Hospital. That's according to military officials and all positive test results were confirmed by BMC Hospital. And it's important to note that these cases are not related to the cruise ship evacuees being quarantined at Lackland. The next step is to trace any contact that was made by those four military members. That's being done by public health officials. Reporting Alicia Barrera. KSAT 12 News. It's chilly out there this morning. It's 56 degrees at the airport, 52 up at Bernie Stage Airfield. But the biggest thing you'll notice out there is uh, the mist and fog. Visibility is down to a quarter of a mile around San Antonio. Now we'll see this mist and fog lift in the mid morning hours, but it'll stay cloudy pretty much all day long. There is the potential for a few peaks of sunshine right at about dinner time and that'll allow our temperatures to warm up to near 70 degrees. So cool today, but warmer than yesterday. And then we'll be looking at a warming trend in this entire week. We'll be sunny and temperatures will be near 90 degrees just about all week long. Uh, so guys, if you are cooped up inside, just know that this week is going to be nice to take a walk outside or walk the dog. Right, That's good so news.
All right, well, you're about to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. When we come back, we are going to talk about so much, including that economic stimulus package and what that could mean for you. And also, we're going to catch up with Alicia Barrera, who's going to take us to a church where they're inviting people to drive up and listen to the service. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, we have the latest numbers of confirmed coronavirus cases in Bear County, where officials say four more cases were now confirmed. Plus, with your doctor's orders, you can get tested for COVID-19 using a drive through We're going to have the details. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. It is not the most beautiful picture out there, but we are expecting a little bit more throughout the day. We're going to check in with our yeah. Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, Sarah says it's going to get better. Mm, yeah, yeah, if the, the social distancing mm -hmm. and the isolation isn't keeping you at home, the weather might. Well, yeah, and unfortunately, we kind of need those few precious hours of outdoors time, walking the dog or maybe just going for a walk or even making a quick trip to the grocery store. Yesterday, the weather did not cooperate with us at all, but we did receive some much needed rain today. It's a little icky out there right now, but I do think it's going to be a nicer day. In fact, once this mist and fog lifts, uh, we may even see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. Right now, however, it is on the chilly side. It's 56 at the airport, 52 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 51 in Kerrville, 52 in Vandera, 57 in New Braunfels, and 56 in Canyon Lake. We are seeing fog out there. Visibility less than a quarter of a mile in many places, down to three quarters of a mile. Uh, at Bernie Stage Airfield and down to a mile in New Braunfels. So, like I said, we do kind of cherish those few hours of outdoors time if we can socially distance ourselves. So if you're taking the dog for a walk today, just know that right now out there, yellow paw is not great. It's a little foggy, a little drizzly, but by about the lunch hour, it should be pretty nice, a little cloudy, and we will see few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, near 70 this afternoon. Yesterday we were in the 50s. Today we'll be able to warm up to near 70 and an even uh, more intense warm up ahead for us as we could see our first 90 degree day of the season in the week ahead. I have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We are continuing to follow the latest details involving COVID-19 this morning. We have the latest numbers Four more people at JBSA testing positive for the virus. So with the new military member total count now at 11 confirmed, officials tell us that these cases are not in relation to the cruise ship evacuees being quarantined at the base. Meanwhile, Metro Health authorities say there are now 39 positive cases of the coronavirus total throughout the county, nine of which contracted through community spread and in our surrounding areas, a first case confirmed in Guadalupe County, while a second case reported by the city of Bernie and Kendall County. And around the state of Texas, the Department of Health and Human Services reporting 304 positive cases and five deaths right now on KSET.com. You can find an interactive map highlighting each county affected and how many cases are being reported. Now, later this afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott is expected to give an update on the pandemic, and the state's efforts to combat COVID-19. The governor will be joined by a Texas Department of State Health Services Commissioner, as well as the Texas Division of Emergency Management. The press conference is scheduled to happen at 3 this afternoon at the state capitol in Austin. Be sure to follow Case at 12 on all your social media platforms. And you can also visit our website for the latest updates. Meanwhile, the first rapid diagnostic test for COVID-19 has been approved by the FDA. The new test can detect a few of the virus in about 45 minutes. The California based company, which makes the test, says that they can actually start shipping the test as soon as next week. And doctors say faster testing will help alleviate some of those pressures on limited hospital resources. And with doctors orders, there is a drive through testing site available at the Freeman Coliseum. However, people are being instructed to first call their doctor if they believe they are experienced in COVID-19 symptoms. You can only get tested if you have doctor's orders. The uh, site is also available for first responders, healthcare workers, and via bus drivers. We are told the site will let, allow up to 16 tests per hour to be administered. And from the questions of basic medical equipment to the availability of these tests, the Trump administration continues to face hard questions about their handling of this crisis. ABC's Trevor Alt has more from the White House this morning. 
As America's healthcare system faces unprecedented strain and alarmingly depleted supplies, the president's coronavirus task force has announced they're making massive purchases to try to meet demand. HHS is completing a, um, a half a billion dollar order of N95 masks and, and um, uh, all of this is being coordinated through FEMA. That's $500 million in medical masks spread out over the next year and a half, though the task force didn't give a timeline for exactly when those masks will be delivered to the nurses and doctors who so desperately need them. When exactly can they expect to receive these masks, though? We'll prioritize uh, those scarce resources because every single governor across the country is looking for the exact same things. So. Even the president jumping in to ask the task force for a direct answer. Uh, when will we make the masks them, start coming in. The, 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 they're, they're, they're out there now. So again, we want to match. We want to get out of the middle, I think. So we're trying to match suppliers with demand. So that's what we're doing right now. It's happening today. The president also continues to tout a medicinal pairing that he says could be one of the biggest game changers in the history of medicine. Malaria drug hydroxychloroquine and antibiotic azithromycin, which don't have FDA approval for use against the virus. Right now, this to me would be uh, the greatest thing that could happen. This would be a gift from heaven. This would be a gift from God if it works. Dr. Anthony Fauci said the president is trying to be hopeful, though he made a point to clarify neither drug has undergone necessary testing for recommended use. The FDA also confirming a new rapid test for COVID-19 will be available at the end of the month, providing results in 45 minutes instead of days. And again, that was Trevor Alt reporting. Back here at home, University Hospital officials announcing they will be limiting visitors to only those who are necessary for patient care. Now, those visitors must be at least 14 years old or older and undergo a screening to enter. In addition, they also have to close the hospital cafeteria. Now, BAMSI is allowing only a social support person to visit. We have a list of criteria to be allowed in for both hospitals on our website at kset.com. And Governor Abbott also taking action to expand the nursing workforce. He's waiving several regulations, helping meet Texas's growing need for nurses during this pandemic. Now, the governor will be allowing temporary permit extensions to practice for graduate nurses and graduate vocational nurses who have yet to even take the nursing licensing exam. Now, the new measures also allowing students in their final year of nursing school to meet their clinical objectives by exceeding the 50% limit on simulated experience. And the governor also allowing nurses with inactive licenses or retired nurses to reactivate their licenses. And the pandemic forcing businesses, events, conferences, nonprofits, and even churches to shut their doors in order to continue their services, though people have to think outside the box with online to go or even curbside options. And you've heard of a drive-in theater, but what about a drive-in church service? Our Alicia Beretta is live from Gateway Fellowship Church ahead of today's services. sure what's going on there let me grab the mic over here so what's gonna happen here we have uh we're live with a pastor here hopefully you can hear me better can we confirm back there pastor john van uh good morning how are you doing good morning we're doing great very excited all right so we haven't heard of it before but a drive in a church service so we're gonna tune into 94 7 then what happens where are you gonna be yeah, I'm going to be on the roof of the church. Uh, we're going to be, we're, we're kind of simple church today. And uh, we're getting out of our church building and, and doing it outside and, and kind of going back to where we can seize an opportunity, where we can, can see our church people. Everybody's been holed up in their homes for too long. And I think everybody's going to want to get out. And uh, we're excited just to lift up the name of Jesus, proclaim the gospel, and, and comfort people. Uh, that's what this is about. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And and people need to hear that news and have an opportunity to get right with God. And then there's an option also on YouTube and on Facebook uh, for people to tune in. And this is just finding a way to be, be together, like I said earlier, 
when we just can't be together. Well said. We're, we're trying to come together to gather. When we really can't gather, we're staying in our cars uh, and, and we're, we're keeping our distance because we want to comply and we, we want to keep everybody safe. That's most important. But we just we just know that the Lord has given us hope, you know, and I, I, people need to be comforted by that. And there's hope when we come together as a family of God, as, as a body, and, and we can worship together and, and hear the good news to, to bring peace and comfort to a, during a difficult time. But this is a, a great opportunity for our church to model a creative way of making a way. Perfect. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we're going to stick around here on KSAT. Uh, be with us on 830 here at GMSA. And again, we're going to be showing you exactly how this is all going to work. The tuning in, uh, dialing in on the radio, how people are going to be um, driving in here. The services are 9 and 1045 a.m. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you all. Thank you, Alicia. And if you haven't heard by now, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center holding a week-long community blood drive this week in hopes of building a 20-day supply amid the outbreak. Now, the drive will be at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., but donations are by appointment only. We have all that information to sign up on our website at kset.com. And along with the blood drive, we have complete coronavirus coverage online, including an interactive map of all the Texas cases, details on how grocery stores are handling the pandemic, and a list of websites to keep your kids busy while school is out. Again, all of this, kset.com, just go to the coronavirus tab. And time now, 810, 56 degrees out. And a group of choir students not letting the coronavirus get in the way of their hard work. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at how they showcase their performance to family and friends. Plus, in non-pandemic news, help Aww. name this adorable baby rhino. The name's up for debate and how you can cast your vote right now. And helping out our local zoo, how you can do your part to make sure they are maintained and adequately, adequately cared for during the pandemic. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 56 degrees. It is not that nice out right now, but things might change, especially during the week. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. And welcome back. It is 815. The San Antonio Zoo asking for your help after they were forced to tempor temporarily close in the midst of coronavirus pandemic. Now, the zoo is a nonprofit which means it relies 100% on ticket sales, donations, annual pass members, and community partners for funding. Now, while they will continue to provide for the animals daily, the funding they are asking for will keep zoo operations running smoothly during the closure and help support the care of the animals. The zoo will be closed to the public until further notice during the epidemic. And you know what? We are going to stick with zoo news. The Denver, Colorado Zoo is asking for your help in a much different way, though. They have a new baby rhino, and they just couldn't decide our name. So they're asking you to help choose. They have it narrowed down to three choices. But obviously, we want viewers to jump in. Vote for the best one. Sarah, listen up, because you are going to be the one answering this. The choices right now are tally, means youthful or young. Juni translates to treasure or joyful. And finally, Pemba, the first. Nepalese female mountaineer to climb Mount Everest. So if you want to be part of the contest, the zoo is asking for a donation. All you have to do, go to their website, denverzoo.org, to cast your vote. Steph, what do you think? I had a viewer just message mm. me and said, Robbie the Rhino. That's not, <laughs> not an one, option. I know, it's not an option. <laughs> With the options given, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I'm going Tali. What, what are you thinking, Sarah? What do you think? Well, I don't. I just 100% think it's cute and we should support our zoos. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I cute, stand. Fine, you win, Sarah. Yeah, that's where I stand right now. But I do want to take you through the forecast because we are going to be a little icky out there right now this morning, but by the afternoon we should see nicer conditions. A few peaks of sunshine will be possible this afternoon, but it is mainly going to be a gray Sunday. Right now outside, however, you can really see that fog and there are areas of mist out there as well. 56 degrees and the dew point is right there with it at 55 when dew points and temperatures meet and the winds are generally calm. That's when we see fog develop, and boy, have we seen fog develop all around the Alamo City. Uh, in fact, we're seeing visibility as low as three quarters of a mile at JBSA Randolph, as low as a mile in New Braunfels, three quarters of a mile up at Bernie Stage Airfield, and then less than 
a quarter of a mile at the airport. So there are areas of fog. As with every case of fog, if you are driving this morning, there will be times when the fog is worse in some places and better in others. So just use some caution. We will see the fog start to lift later on this morning, but for now this fog is kind of keeping temperatures steady. It's 56 degrees at the airport, so chilly. 52 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 52 in Comfort, 51 in Kerrville, 55 at Stinson, and 57 in New Braunfels. All around the KSAT 12 viewing area, it's generally in the 50s. 50s, 56 in Del Rio and in Catula, a little bit warmer along the coastal plain, 65 in Victoria and 63 in Corpus Christi. Now, while we're not seeing any strong returns on the radar right now, there are those areas of mist and there's a tiny little shower in the extreme northeastern corner of Atascosa County, just to the north east of Pleasanton and just to the east of that I-35 corridor. A few splash and dash showers working their way through Floresville at the moment as well, but we're not going to see as much rain as we did yesterday. And in fact, as our future cast shows, although it'll stay cloudy for the vast majority of the day in the afternoon, there could be a few peaks of sunshine. A few isolated showers southeast of San Antonio, but generally around San Antonio, we will be able to warm up today. Yesterday we were only in the 50s all day long, but because of the potential for a few peaks of sunshine, we should be able to warm up to near 70 degrees. It's still going to be cool though this morning. Most of the morning will be in the 50s and near 63 right around lunch hour and then late tonight fog will redevelop. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, but a lot of us were not able to go outside yesterday, even just for a stroll around the neighborhood. Just know that today uh, the weather will cooperate a little bit more for that. And then in the week ahead, if you are one who wants to go spend some time uh, socially distancing yourself, but outdoors at a park or uh, going on one of the hikes around one of our many trails around San Antonio, just know that the weather is going to be pretty nice this upcoming week. A little muggy, definitely warm near 90 degrees on Wednesday. We'll could potentially see our first 90 degree day of the season. Our average time to see a 90 degree day is right around early April, so we're fairly on schedule there. But it is going to be a sunny week ahead after a few days here where we have seen plenty of rainfall. Again, just morning fog and drizzle, few peaks of sunshine today near 70 degrees, 81 tomorrow, and then off to the races with that heat will be near 90 degrees just about every day this upcoming week. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Looking forward to the sun. Got to get to Wednesday. That's it. Yeah, we'll be all right. Time now, 820, 56 degrees out. And using technology to share their talent with their family and their friends. Um, next, we're going to check in with this group of California students. Good morning and welcome back. 824 this Sunday morning and many schools canceled. Millions of students around the country, they may feel that their hard work and their creativity is not really as showcased as they would have hoped. But one group of choir kids in California not letting that get to them. Take a look. Now these students decided to do a virtual performance of Over the Rainbow for their friends and families after their school's concert got canceled because of the pandemic. They sound great. That's a first off credit <laughs> to them for being as organized as they are. That's true. <laughs> and I mean, just to be so in harmony with each other in a virtual setting. Yeah. I mean, it's really I've had to do some Skype interviews and it hasn't even been close to as smooth as that. I, I, in all coordinating. Yes, mm -hmm. looks good. Yeah, well we done. appreciate the bright spot at this time. Over the rainbow. Yeah, there you go. 825 56 degrees out and making sure students don't go hungry after classes were postponed. Still ahead, where parents can get curbside meals for the week. And staying fit while you're at home. Still ahead, how one local fitness studio is helping out for free. And the attorney, attorney general getting firm on price gouging. Up next on GMSA, the thousands of dollars in penalties you could face if caught. And let's take a look at birthdays. First up, Aww. Zoe Jane. Happy birthday, three years old. Happy birthday. Enjoy your birthday, Zoe Jane. Now keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and your age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Lots to talk about this morning. 
That's right. Thanks for joining us. It is 56 degrees right now. Uh, it's a little warmer than yesterday morning. A little bit. It was uh, like, what would you say, 50, 51. 51 yesterday morning? Well, in the break, mm -hmm. our Sarah Spivey had a fantastic meteorological term. I think she called it gross outside? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little gross outside right now, just because we are seeing areas of mist and fog out there. And it's chilly, but I want to assure you, it's not going to stay gross all day long. We are going to see the fog come to an end by the lunch hour, but right now outside, just a bunch of gray out there taking a look at visibility in miles in many places less than a quarter of a mile at the airport down to half a mile at Bernie stage airfield and down to about half a mile at JBSA Randolph as well uh, down to a mile in New Braunfels. So just about all of us dealing with this fog and mist, uh, but we are not expecting as much rain as what we saw yesterday. And again, even by the afternoon, we could potentially see a few peaks of sunshine. It's cool out there right now. 57 in New Braunfels, 51 in Kerrville, 57 in Hondo, 55 in Uvalde, 52 in Rock Springs. And it's really cool across the entire state of Texas. We're still dealing with the effects of that front that moved through on Friday. It's in the 40s up in the panhandle of Texas. But again, because we'll see a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon, I still think we'll be able to warm up to near 70 degrees. Those winds from the south southeast of 5 to 10 are also going to help us warm up today. Even with the cloud cover, we'll likely be in the 60s by the lunch hour. The forecast gets better for those of us who are wanting to spend some time outdoors this upcoming week. I'll be showing you a big warm up coming up in just a few minutes. You're going to be impressed by those high temperatures. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, during this pandemic, many local businesses have been forced to close their doors and cancel all gatherings. Many churches taking the same approach, but some are thinking outside the box. That's right. Inviting their church community to drive in, park, and crank up their radios to tune into a live service. Our Alicia Beretta is live from Gateway Fellowship Church ahead of today's services. Good morning. Good morning. Well, the main thing that they're doing is finding a way to be together, even though we can't physically be together. And for any church doing this style of drive in, as well as Gateway Fellowship Church, the main rule to follow state and local uh, restrictions is to just stay in your car. So what they'll be doing, you'll tune in to 94 seven. Let's turn this up right now. We hear static, but once we turn it to 94 seven, you can hear the music. So you'll be able to hear through your radio, but when you step, well, when you look out of your window, in our case, stepping out of the vehicle, you'll actually be looking up here on the roof on that brown portion there where the um, a message will be, the service will happen. So that is a really neat thing that's going on today. We have lead pastor, John Van Bay. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so how is this exactly gonna work? People have to stay in their vehicles to make this happen. Yeah, we've never done this before, but the big rule is that when people come, uh, they've got to stay in their cars at all times. They can't get out to use the bathroom, can't get out to get to hug people. But this is a way that we can be together without technically being together. And then the services right now are happening 9 a.m. and then 1045. And as we see here, we have a group of volunteers helping make this happen. Aren't they the best? The, the, the church team, the leadership team and volunteers have come out early to pray and get ready to just not just worship with our church family and proclaim the good news of Jesus, but we're inviting anybody in our city who wants to come out who really needs to be comforted and, and, and not feel like they're alone, that they can come together with people who are going to encourage them, love them and lift up the name of Jesus and be encouraged by that good news. And last question for you. Obviously, this has been a, an entire production. How are you going to get up on that roof? <laughs> I found a ladder on the backside, and so we're going to get on top of that roof, and hopefully I don't fall off. Uh, it's not raining anymore. I don't have to be afraid of lightning, but uh, <laughs> the Lord is with us. We know he's given us this idea, and we, we glorify and praise him, and we're really excited about this. We believe people are going to get right with the Lord and, and hear good news. And, uh, yeah, if, if you could pray that I don't fall off, that would be a good thing. But we're going to have uh, a band that's going to be singing and I'm going to be preaching from the rooftop. Jesus said that. He said, hey, whatever I whisper in your ear, ear proclaim from the rooftop. So driving church is biblical and we're excited about it. We're trying something new, different, creative. It might be crazy. We don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a try. All right. 
Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And as you can see, the volunteers, they have their signs. They say, we love you. Another one says, stay in your car. So again, this is the drive-in style that uh, Gateway Fellowship Church, as well as other churches in the community are taking this morning. But again, the big rule that you need to remember if you decide to tune in, um, 94.7 for this church is just to stay in your car. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. And of course, be careful, Pastor John. Absolutely. Well, State Attorney General Ken Paxton issuing a stern warning to retail suppliers, including those who supply grocery stores and pharmacies, that state law strictly prohibits price gouging in the wake of this declared disaster. Now, price gouging laws apply to any person or entity selling necessities at, you know, excessive price after a disaster has been declared by the governor or president. Now, this includes those who supply retailers. Now, also issuing a statement saying, quote, my office will work aggressively to investigate and prosecute any price gougers who take advantage of a disaster declaration by selling necessities at an excessive price, including retail suppliers and grocery and pharmacy chains, end quote that no one is exempt from price gouging laws here in Texas. And those found guilty could face up to $10,000 per violation with an additional penalty of up to $250,000 if the affected consumers are elderly. If you know of anywhere, any place as recently price gouged, you could call this toll free number on your screen. And that number, as you can see, is 800-621-0508. And we want to remind parents that although classes are canceled and students are home, several districts are making sure that kids don't go hungry. Now, schools all over San Antonio are doing curbside pickup throughout the week. All you have to do is drive up and wait to be handed the meals. Keep in mind, some schools do require that the student be present at the time of the pickup. If you have any questions about your specific pickup location and specifically about your district, we have all the information right now on KSAT.com. And if you aren't sure where to pick up your meals, we have that map. Right there, we have the pin locations, very interactive, very easy to monitor, very easy to go through. Again, just ksat.com. And over in the state of Hawaii, their governor instituting a mandatory 14-day self-quarantine for all people traveling to the state. Now, the decision comes as part of efforts to fight the spread of the coronavirus. The order applies to returning residents and visitors who arrive at Hawaii airports from the continental United States and from international destinations. The Hawaiian governor says returning residents must quarantine themselves at home and visitors have to quarantine themselves in their hotel room. The governor also says people under quarantine are only going to be allowed to leave their homes or their hotels for medical emergencies or to seek medical care. On Capitol Hill, the House of Representatives has delayed its return from recess after at least two members tested positive for COVID-19. Now, in addition, numerous others are in self-quarantine. Entry into House office buildings will be limited beginning Monday, and members and staffers are being instructed to work from home. House leaders are also putting together plans for members to vote in staggered smaller groups on the House floor. And the markets are not open today, but tomorrow there's going to be a big change. The New York Stock Exchange switching entirely to electronic trading. So following the pandemic, no one is going to be allowed on the actual exchange floor. The physical locations, they're going to be closed, and it's going to include the New York Stock Exchange equities and American options trading floors in New York City and the options trading floor in San Francisco. Important to mention, the floor is closing, but all markets will maintain their regular trading hours. And while many Americans are now being forced to stay at home, work from home, work at home, they go to school at home. I know that you're actually kind of homeschooling your daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of Americans around the country doing that. Well, victims of domestic abuse, well, they're often getting overlooked. Well, during this time, there are reports that shelters are seeing a dramatic increase in calls for help as people shelter in place to avoid COVID-19 exposure. WFA's Rebecca Lopez has the details. The streets look empty as many people are staying at home to stop the spread of COVID-19. But for domestic violence victims, it's a horrible situation. Jessica Garza is a survivor. Being there with your abuser, I can't imagine what it's like for them right now because me, I just needed to leave. Domestic violence shelters like the Family Place say they are seeing a big increase in calls for help. Because this is going to be similar to what happens in the holidays when everyone's together and um, 
a lot of frustration and there's a lot of stress. Some shelters have run out of room and looking to put victims in hotel rooms and other places. What's also happened is because in some shelters, they don't have private bedrooms and so they've had to isolate people and spread them apart, which has reduced how many people they can take. Paige Flink is in charge of the family place. She says they're getting extremely violent calls that are COVID-19 related. People being locked in rooms, shot through in the doors, prevented from leaving, having to stay because he's afraid she'll go out and get it. And, you know, just all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. Garza was able to go to her sisters for help. She says women should not hesitate to find a safe place to go. Let that shelter be something else. In this new norm that we're finding ourselves in, let the new shelter be a friend's home, a hotel room. The family place says it will not turn anyone away that's in a lethal situation. They will find a place. They also say they're making sure everyone coming in does not have symptoms of the virus and they're deep cleaning their buildings frequently to make sure everyone is safe. In Arlington, I'm Rebecca Lopez. And back here at home, if you are someone you need help, the Battered Women and Children's Shelter is still open. Now they provide 24 hour emergency shelter services. They also have a crisis hotline. If you just need to talk, that number on your screen, 1-800-799-SAFE. Their website is also located there right on your screen. And on a lighter note this morning, if you are stuck at home and you're looking for ways to stay active, a local fitness studio launching a free daily online workout online yoga and even online nutrition classes. One Plus Fitness on Austin Highway offering the free at home classes. Just head to their Facebook Live. You can either follow along or watch the posted video on Facebook when you are ready. Just go to the One Plus Fit Facebook page. Now one of the instructors says now more than ever it is important to eat healthy and adjust your nutrition because of well the changes that we are seeing in our daily lifestyle. So take a look at your screen. There's going to be tons of activities to keep you and the entire family busy. The best part, it is all free. Now, it might differ in times, but the great thing about it is being on Facebook, you can always go back and rewatch it. If you miss anything, organizers say this is meant to keep you moving while you are stuck indoors in a more sedentary lifestyle. Now, you can increase your metabolism and boost your immune system. You can learn about a lot of things like nutrition and the best practices to train. And if you're going to head out on the road today, maybe work or maybe a drive-in church service like our Alicia Barrera just showed us, or even just to pass a day, we have three lowest prices in gas in San Antonio for you. So according to Gas Bunny, Buddy, as of yesterday, the lowest price is $139 at the Pay Less Gas on the West Military Drive and Timber Creek. Now the second lowest, $143 at Sunny's Ice and Food on West Avenue near Dresden Drive. And the next best is at 149 at the Mega Food Mart on Marbuck and Old Hunt Lane. Ooh, so glad we did this because the I was so excited. I saw 177. I was like, let's go. It's even cheaper here. It's insane. Yes. All right. Time now, 842, 56 degrees out. And an unconventional tip for service still ahead on GMSA, how one Corpus Christi homeowner decided to thank her delivery guy amid the coronavirus. Plus a San Antonio couple doing what they can bring smiles after their wedding was canceled, how they were helping the community and a nice surprise to the Alamo City. We have the details next. And taking a look outside with live cam, can't see much, but our Ooh, week's gonna look better. Can't see anything. <laughs> Sarah says the sun's gonna come out this week. We can't wait and we're gonna check in with her in just a bit. Welcome back, it's 846. So residents at a local nursing home were surprised with bouquets of fresh flowers this week after a local couple's wedding got canceled. So originally set to be married today, Crystal and Jason decided to donate their arrangements after the coronavirus forced them to postpone their big day. So turning a bad situation and do a helpful hand to the community. And assisted living facilities around the state have been closed to visitors in recent weeks because people over 60 are considered to be more at risk for COVID-19. Now the flowers for taken to Legacy at Forest Ridge is assisted living and adult daycare and New Haven assisted living and memory care on Friday. The couple rescheduled their wedding date to August 1st. And I love these pictures. Mm -hmm. They're all smiling and beautiful flowers as well. They are beautiful. And this is kind of what we've been talking about all morning. We cover all these really 
horrible events, but it's so beautiful to see the community come yeah. together and help those in need. Yes, it's very nice. Absolutely, guys. You got to look for the silver lining whenever you can. And today's weather is going to end up being nicer in the afternoon, but right now outside, it's just icky. It's uh, foggy uh, and we saw a lot of rain yesterday. In fact, we've seen a lot of beneficial rainfall since Thursday, especially for areas that are stricken with drought, and that's mainly south of Highway 90. Take a look at some of these numbers. In Pearsall since Thursday, a little bit more than two inches of rain, almost three inches of rain in Pleasanton since Thursday, almost three inches of rain down in Catula as well, and up to two inches of rain out near Seguin. Here at the airport in San Antonio, we've seen just under an inch of rain. Again, this is all very healthy rainfall. Uh, as we head into the growing season here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at up toward Rock Springs, up to about two and a half inches of rainfall. And unfortunately, outside right now, this is the picture we are stuck with. Just really foggy, low clouds, even some areas of mist. It's 56 degrees out there. Dew points and the temperatures are right near each other with calm winds, and that's why we've got the areas of fog out there. It's chilly this morning, but not as cold as yesterday morning. It's 56 at the airport, 52 Kerrville, 55 Uvalde, 56 in Del Rio, and 56 in Catula. But again, the big story this morning are the gray skies and the fog and the mist. Visibility down to less than a quarter of a mile at the airport in San Antonio, down to three quarters of a mile up in Rock Springs, down to a mile in New Braunfels, half a mile in Gonzales, less than two miles down in Pleasanton. We will, however, start to see this fog lift by the uh, late morning hours. Until then, though, there are a few light returns on the radar, uh, mainly over in Wilson County right now and down toward a uh, a Nixon Smiley area in Gonzalez County. So really, this is just some very light rain. The main uh, weather that's going on right now are the areas of mist and drizzle. But take a look at the high res future cast. Take you into the afternoon. It's going to stay pretty cloudy just about all day, but we do have the potential for a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, and that will allow temperatures to rebound to near 70 degrees. So yesterday we stayed all day in the 50s, but thanks to a southeasterly breeze today and the few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, I still think we'll be able to warm up to near 70. So again, quite the improvement from yesterday's chilly weather. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and tonight we'll see fog redevelop. But let's take a quick check of the weather setup. The rain Maker is to the north, and in its stead, we're going to see a ridge of high pressure move over towards south central Texas. So that in the week ahead, we're going to be in for some sunshine and a big warm up. Starting on Wednesday, our temperatures will be near 90 degrees, and that'll continue through the end of the week as well. So it is going to be a warm week ahead, a lot of sunshine. A lot of us are staying indoors, but sometimes we have to get out and walk the dog or make a quick run to the grocery store. The weather will be nice for that this week. A little warm, a little muggy, but definitely spring-like. Max, Stephanie? Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad it's going to work out this week. Real silver lining. 850, 56 degrees out. And coming up next on GMSA, making one Corpus Christi man's day after delivering produce. The tip he was left by the homeowner during the pandemic crisis. And taking a look at those lotto numbers, pick three is 834, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 8, 7, 5, 2, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 9, 12, 28, 29, 35. And your Powerball numbers, 2, 23, 40, 59, 69, Powerball 13, Power Play 2. Good luck. Here's the news you need to know before you go. Later this afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott expected to give an update on the pandemic and the state's efforts to combat COVID-19. The press conference is scheduled to happen at 3 this afternoon at the state capitol in Austin. Make sure to follow Case at 12 online and on all your social platforms. We are going to be live streaming it. And do you have pounds to lose but no weight loss plan? Tomorrow on GMSA at 6, we're going to be focusing on foods that promote a feeling of fullness without added weight gain. And we just got the pollen count in and it's Ooh. not great news. Yeah, mold is high past 1000. Oak is high at 730. Hackberry is present, but it is in low amounts. And as far as the forecast goes, uh, we'll be seeing this fog and drizzle continue. But in the afternoon, a few peaks of sunshine near 80, 70 degrees rather. And then in the week ahead, near 90 just about every day.
Ooh, three Not days bad. of 90s. Three something. days of 90s. Isn't yeah. that pretty nice? All right, before we let you go this morning, we want to share a quick video that had us laughing this morning. So this Corpus Christi produce delivery man's encounter was caught on camera. Yeah, you can see that there is a white bag on the side as he was leaving groceries at the doorstep. That's when the homeowner told him that it was a hit tip. After starting staring at it for a couple of seconds, he realized it was a roll of toilet paper. And of course, everybody got a kick out of it, including us. Glad to see it was happy have, day for him. Have a great rest of your day.